and welcome back wanted to bring you back as promised to show you how we are going to compress our cells now there's a lot of debate on um, if you, a you really need to do this or b you know should you be doing this I don't want to get into that that whole debate other than manufacturer does state on a lot of these cells that having the cells under compression will help with the longevity uh, meaning you'll get more charge so or potentially get more charge cycles out of them uh, now we don't have access to the proper equipment to put these under the same type of compression and the way they compress them when they're doing their tests in the factory but uh, you know so we're kind of left with our best guess and kind of along the lines of something's better than nothing uh, type deal. Now, what we've elected to do here is just to kind of start things off, uh, just to give you a little bit of heads up. Yeah, you'll notice these cells are all going in the same direction. I put this together just as a temporary basis to kind of show you what it was going to look like to, and also to be able to take some measurements. Once this is top balanced, along with that 16 group of cells is top balanced, then we'll get these cells flipped in for in, and we'll get this in a series configuration. But until then, um, the first thing to notice is that you'll notice, just like on the will to build and lithium solar setup, there is a little plastic insulator between the two cells, or between each cell, I should say. What that is, is these flexible cutting mats, and links to all this will be in the description below. They're cut to size and dropped in between. Uh, the reason why we're doing that is that the casing of these cells, if you were to take this blue cover off, is actually tied to the positive of the battery. Uh, so when they're in a series configuration and they're flipped around, although it does provide insulation, this just gives you a little extra protection to make sure that something doesn't happen to this blue cover and the positive of one cell ground, uh, touches the positive of another one, and you end up with a connection where you don't want a connection. Not, again, not to say that would happen if you're not using these, but again, it just gets a, these are fairly cheap to get a hold of. They're easy to cut out, and it gives, just gives you that little extra bit of insurance. Uh, now, we went ahead and just covered our positive bars you see here with Capton tape while we're kind of working around this and we do have our gloves on today. Now, um, we have our construction a little bit different as you'll notice is that we're not running the threaded rod through the three quarter inch piece of wood and there is a three quarter inch block on each end. Uh, we came out a little bit with some angled aluminum that you see here and then ran our three eighths inch rod through it and tighten things down. Now, it hasn't been done to all of them because I kind of want to show you a before and an after, but once we're ready, ready to do the final assembly, we'll take another piece of this half inch PEX. So this is half inch blue PEX, and we'll cover all of these threaded rods just to give it some extra protection so that way wiring and such doesn't hit up against this threaded rod and potentially chafe or do something that we don't want it to do. So we came out again a little bit and then just started kind of tightening things down, keeping our, our, our tightness as even as we could between all four bolts on each side. And I stopped at the point where I could do this. So if I take, just take one of these cells and push it, you'll notice I'm pushing the entire pack. I'm not able to push an individual cell out of position. That's where I stopped. Now, because I don't want to go too much compression on here and run run damaging one of these, but I wanted something on there. Now, whether that is the correct amount of pressure to apply, again, I can't tell you that, but I can say that when we had these, if you remember before, when we had these in our two by four frames doing the initial charging, and these cells will actually expand a little bit while they're charging, uh, and, um, once all 16 were charged up, at the end of it, I could do that. I could take one of these cells and push it, and the entire pack would move. So that's why I'm replicating that type of setup when I'm doing this, uh, when we do the final pack assembly you see here. And then, once we had that complete, we then took our inch-pound torque wrench and zeroed it out. 
put it on put it on our corner bolts and turned until we got to the point where the bolt just started to turn and you may not be able to see the indicator there but that ended up right about 20 inch pounds now that's 20 inch pounds for our particular setup with the way that we've handled our brackets and our board and our 3 8 inch threaded rod so at 20 inch pounds for these fasteners got it to the point where again I could push any cell in this pack and then the entire pack will move as you can again see here uh, so I don't want to say that's a how-to it's not it's not a recommendation that you should do that to your bank everyone's banks different your construction is going to be different you may not have 16 cells all in a row you may do two rows of eight and then have a third rod down the middle which may help better more evenly add your uh, compression but the way these packs are going to be tied into the existing house system it's better for me in our setup to have banks of 16 in a row rather than side by side eights uh, another reason why that we came out a bit further rather than running the bolt out of the block of wood is that you notice it gives us a lot more space between the threaded rod and the battery. Now we're still going to put that half inch piece of PEX on here like we said earlier for protection, but it gives us that extra bit of space. And that comes important for our long mons. Our long mons tie into our Batrium BMS that we were talking about yesterday. And what they're going to do, just like all the other pack setups that we've done in the past, long mons got to mount to the side of the battery and we've got some standoffs that'll stick to the battery and allow us to kind of tie wrap these in place. And each cell is going to have one down the line. So that also gives us extra room to be able to get the long mon in there and not worry about it getting too close and touching up against. Now, these are potted, as you can see, with the exception of the LED that's at the top. What these do is not only do they monitor their own temperature as well as cell temperature because there are uh, temperature sensors on this board. They monitor battery voltage, but they also serve to help balance the pack, meaning when it's under charge conditions, and this is what we were talking about yesterday, we use the long life LiPo 4 setting. So what will happen is it will monitor each cell individually. So each cell will have at least one of these, and if that cell goes above 3.5 volts, these will go into what they call bypass mode. And they're capable of shunting or bypassing up to, up to a two amps of current that it will put as a load on each cell. That's to allow this cell, maybe this cell hits 3.5 volts before this one does. Maybe it's a little, gets a little bit out of balance. That's in an effort to help bleed the excess energy off of this cell, but still allowing this cell to kind of catch up and continue to charge for the rest of the pack. And again, having that extra bit of space, having it spaced out, gives us the room we need to you know, get our long mons in there and be comfortable. We've got plenty of breathing space there. Uh, now what we're gonna do, a little bit of bonus content for you, what we're gonna do to get our packs tied into the bus bars in the main house is that we're gonna use these, as you can see, compared to the size of my hand, these giant Anderson connectors. These are rated for up to 350 amps at 600 volts. I got these from the Electric Par Car Parts Company. The link will be in the description. These will, I believe these will handle up to four aught cabling, if I remember correctly. Um, I will be using two aught battery slash welding wire. Again, two aught cabling, two slash zero cabling. And this will be our main connection between our battery banks and the main bus bars of the house. And when we get to that point, we'll obviously, we'll definitely do another video, bring you in and kind of show you all of those connections. But you'll notice a lot of pre-built batteries that you buy nowadays for solar setups, the kind where you can just get a battery already configured with a group of cells in it and a BMS, and it's already set for your nominal voltage and you just have to add it to your existing system. You'll notice a lot of those are coming with these Anderson connectors on them. That's why we're going to use them here. It gives us a nice, convenient way to quickly be able to connect in, 
because this will be the mate to it here, which is just another one of those connectors. And they flip over and they interlock in place. Uh, this will come off the battery bank and you'll have another one of these which will run through a fuse and then to the main bus bars. But again, gives us a nice convenient way to be able to add a pack to the system or remove a pack to the system without undoing a bunch of bolts and or you know other type connections. And since the solar industry for the pre-built batteries seems to be using these, they work great. These are also have been used uh, for heavy duty um, uh, DC uh, uh, purposes such as uh, forklifts, electric forklifts. I've seen use these uh, very pretty much Anderson connectors for those big heavy duty high current needs. So it should you know do quite well for what we plan on doing here. And just to show you, those are those massive lugs that get crimped down in place and go into the connector. And when you have two of these and you flip them upside down and put them in together, they'll, they'll lock in place. But again, we'll do another video on that when we get to that point and uh, we'll kind of bring you back to it. So just a quick review that we're using three quarter inch boards on the end. We've got some angled aluminum here. This is three eighths inch rod. Between the cells, we've got this thin cutting mat, and we've got one piece in between each cell. And, uh, and our torque value, at least according for our setup and our torque wrench, once we got the cells to the point that we could push the battery and the entire pack moved, uh, we came right about 20 inch pounds of torque. And again, that was just for this particular setup, with us having the batteries configured the way we are, with these three inch rods using this particular spacing. Again, I'm not saying that that's the, that's the pressure that you need to use. I'm just more or less documenting that when we had our pack assembled and we got it to where we wanted it, that was the torque that we ended up at, which was again, that 20 inch pounds. Uh, but that's it for the update for, for this one. And then uh, we'll bring you back as things progress. Like I said, we still have to top balance these, get that done. And then we'll get this group tied into that group and do one big top balance. Once that's complete, then we'll start tearing these packs apart. We'll get them in serious configuration. And then we'll work on getting them tied into the house system. But uh, I'll chat with you later. Thank you much. Bye.